Thank you, Rabbi Tabak, for such warm and generous words of introduction, which I appreciate very much. Um, and let me say in return, on behalf of all of us, um, a great thank you to Rabbi Tabak for the incredible effort that he has put in here. <laughs> Rabbi Tabak is a, a, a rov of tremendous talent. He's, um, he's a writer, a speaker, a teacher of, um, of tremendous creativity and brilliance and innovation. And uh, it's, uh, our community is indeed blessed, Rabbi Tabak, to benefit so much from your talents. And tonight is but one example of the great benefit that we derive, and, and we thank you for that. Diane Abraham, honored Dayonim Rabonim, guest of honor, Rabbi Hofstadter, ladies and gentlemen, it, uh, it is indeed an honor and even more a pleasure to be here this evening. To, to be part of the launch of the Dafyomi Bahalocha, which we are all gathered here for this, this evening. And what, looking around the hall, and even before earlier, and seeing the throngs of people, couldn't, could not get out of my mind Rav Yitzchak Kosovsky, Zechet Tzadik Livrocha, who was one of the founding fathers of this Kehillah, who came to Johannesburg from Lita, was the brother-in-law of Reb Chaim Moise Grudzinski Zatzal, and not only a member of the family, but one of his close 10 Mukurovim. He was uh, amongst the group that um, Reb Chaim Moise took great Eitzah from, and he was in and amongst all of the Gedolei Europe. And he came to South Africa, and when he came in, in the 1930s, it, uh, it, it it was looked a very different place than it did today. In fact, he arrived in Johannesburg soon, soon after the, um, the patera of, of the Chofetz Chaim, actually. Uh, and I was thinking about that. When, when he was here, what did he see? And what prospect, prospects was there for the growth of Torah in Johannesburg, in particular in South Africa in general? And there's an amazing piece of history where he wrote an article, there's a, a book that has been put together, one, one sefer which has been put together by, by the members of his family called She'elus Yitzchak, which deals with his Shailas and Chuvas, and um, another book which is called Ik Ikve Yitzchak, which is a collection of his writings that he wrote articles and, uh, and gave general approach to Torah, many different areas and facets of life. And he was, he was one of the Gedolim of Europe and a tremendous Talmud Chochem, founding father of so much of what we have here in Johannesburg. And there's, a, there's an article in, in the Ikve Yitzchak where he wrote an article for a newspaper that was published by the Reform community here in Johannesburg. And he was responding to people who said there's no future for, for Torah Judaism in South Africa because what's going to be with the youth? And he's writing in the 1930s. And he didn't have much evidence to go on, but he, had, he didn't need evidence. He just had emunah in Hashem, emunah in Am Yisrael, and emunah in, in the Torah. And that was enough. And he said, never mind that the youth are leaving Yiddishkeit in their droves, but one day it will return. And the, the fact that you sh could have an Av based in such a, a Talmud Chochem Muflag, one of the Gedolim of Europe, who would have to go through the ordeal of writing an article to say there will be a future for Torah and mitzvahs, that in itself tells you what the situation was in those years. And I just would love to see Rav Yitzchak Kosovsky walk into this hall tonight and, and he would see all of the, the B'nai Torah and the, the, the sense of passion and commitment for Torah learning and for mitzvahs. And uh, he arriving here soon after the Petir of the Chofetz Chaim and then to see this incredible launch of the learning of Mishnah Brura, and, and what would he say? And, and there's no doubt that in Shemaim, he's looking down and getting tremendous nachas. And, and, we, and we have to feel that sense of nachas ourselves to take just a step back and realize, look, look what has happened. This, we, we have to see the historical sweep of this kehillah and to realize what an open miracle this is, that by the normal laws of nature, this should not be. 
the normal laws of the events and the cycles of human history. This should not be that a community would return to the traditions and the ways of its forefathers when those who came from the old country arrived here in the new country and left behind under pressures of so many different things, economic forces and so many different difficult challenges that they had to face. And who would think that there would be a future for Yiddishkeit in this community as indeed around the world and to see it thriving tonight I mean, we know that Johannesburg over the, the last number of years has become a true Mokham Torah. But if anybody had any doubt as to the status of Johannesburg as a Mokham Torah, all you had to do is come tonight to see hundreds and hundreds of people gathered for what? To launch a Dafyomi Bahalocha. You actually have to take a step back and say, is this real? Is this really happening? And the answer is it is. And, and, and to appreciate and to say that this is an amazing day that Hashem has created, that this tzibur has created, and it has the power of the words of Chazal, the Torah returns to the place that it was looked after. And uh, our ancestors in Lita looked after the Torah with dedication, with love, and the Torah comes back to a place where it was looked after with such dedication and with such love. And tonight is proof of that. And tonight is proof of how far our community has come. And now we're moving to the next level. A community that has seen the most amazing Balchuva revolution that the world has seen anywhere in sheer proportions. That there's been hardly a family in this community that hasn't been touched by the Balchuva revolution. And how this community has developed and now we are maturing and going to the next level. The level of Dafyomi Bahalocha, Dafyomi in Gomorrah, the, the, the community already has taken that on, and there are many Dafyomi Shurim across the town, and now Dafyomi Bahalocha, it's the next stage of the development of this community, and it's something that we can be enormously proud of as the Johannesburg Jewish community, proud and also grateful at the same time. Because as Rabbi Tabak said, Dirshu. Dirshu means the search, the search for Hashem. And it is, that, it is that dimension that has so defined our community. That sense of thirst, as it says in Chazal, in the Mishnah, Pirkavas, Havashos, Tivrayim, Betzame, drink the words of our sages with thirst. And Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky on that Mishnah explains, he says, you can drink water, you drink water because it's healthy. And water is healthy, and you cannot survive without water. But a person can drink water because they have to because it's healthy, or we can drink water because we're thirsty. And he says, so to the same with Torah. We cannot survive without Torah. And we cannot survive one day and one moment without Torah. It's the water of the neshama. But we can drink the waters of Torah because we have to, or because we are thirsty. And that's what Chazal is saying, have a choice at Ibrahim Betzameh. And, and that, that's why I think it is so special that an organization such as Dirshu, which is putting an emphasis on covering ground in halacha at the same time is built on the concept of thirst, of search, of wanting to do it, not because we have to do it, but because this is something that we deeply desire and that we have a very deep passion for. And that's actually in the bracha. Rabbi Yaakov points out the bracha v'hai revna, make the words of Torah sweet in our mouths, reflect the basic structure of the mitzvah, that simchas ha-Torah, the mitzvah of enjoying the Torah that we learn, it's not just an added element. It is part of the, it's part of the essence of what this mitzvah is about. Vaha Revna, and that's why it's in the bracha. Rabbi Yaakov points out that the Gomorrah learns many halachas from the formulation of a bracha, like it learns that hadlaka oisa mitzvah when it comes to Hanukkah, because it says lahadlik neshel Hanukkah, and so too Vaha Revna learns, we learn from that that the essence of this mitzvah is, is to enjoy it. And I remember from... My Rosh Hashiva, <coughs> Rav Azriel Chaim Goldfein Zatzal, who told me, um, a, told his Talmidim from, from his, um, uh, from Rav Gifta, a story from Rav Gifta's Rebbe, that um, he, uh, with, with Rav Gifta was, was walking with uh, Rav Avram Yitzchak Bloch, Zatzal tells a Rav, and, um, and, and, and he was saying that he gets so much geschmack, so much enjoyment from learning that he's worried that he's not learning Torah Lishma because he enjoys it so much. And Torah Lishma, you're doing it for the sake of the mitzvah. But it's so much enjoyment 
that, um, that maybe he's not doing it lishma. And, and Rav Gifta answered him and he said, but Efsha, that that's the lishma. Maybe the greatest level of lishma, and there's much has been written about this, that the greatest level of lishma is the, is the concept of learning Torah, not because we have to, but because we want to and we enjoy it. And it brings us joy and delight as the Pasuk says, and I remember my Rosh Hashiva quoting this Pasuk time and time again, and he sang it on Purim with, uh, with, with great gusto. Lulei Sarasko Shashuai, as a Varati Boni, were it not for the Torah, your Torah, which is my delight, I would have been lost in my affliction. That the learning of Torah is a joy. When we make a cycle of Dafayomi Bahaloch or Dafayomi in Gomorrah, or whatever that we learn, we learn it. Because that is the, the, the moment in our day that brings us the greatest joy. It's not another chore. It's not another item on the to-do list. It's not that we've got all these other responsibilities. And on top of those responsibilities, we also have to learn Torah. No, the Torah helps us carry everything else. If we didn't have this beautiful Torah in our midst, we would not be able to carry anything else. And, and that is the beauty of this program of Dafayomi Bahalocha, that every single day we bring light and joy into our lives and clarity and vision and that sense of closeness to Hashem that helps us carry everything else. And so <clears throat> may tonight not only be an inspiring event, but may tonight begin a process that each and every single person who feels able to take this on should take it on and that there will be the, the learning of halacha, covering Mishnah Brura, having such an impact, which, uh, which will be a source of great blessing, please God, to our community. And on behalf of all of us, we <clears throat> owe a great debt of gratitude to Rabbi Hofstadter, who has shown visionary leadership for Am Yisrael all around the world in driving this program and many other programs of Kiruv that he does with incredible vision and with enthusiasm. He is invested in our community, time and money and effort and resource to help us get to this level. As a, as a community, it seems too, too simple to say thank you, but those are the only words that, uh, that we know. But our comfort is that um, it's, it's not our thank yous which are your reward. That is in the hands of Hashem. And um, we are just grateful for your kindness and for sharing with Am Yisrael and with our very special South African Jewish community this incredible gift of learning Torah and learning Torah each and every single day. And on behalf of all of us, I would also like to, to thank Diane Abraham for coming from so far to, uh, to, to give us chizuk, just a flying visit in and out and um, Diane Abraham, who's such a respected member of the London based in, and who's a deep and uh, close friend, not only of myself, but of this wonderful Kehillah. And he has come only for the sake of giving us chizuk, taking away time from his family and from his Kehillah. We are grateful to him for, for that. And I think that we can sit back and uh, with thanks to Hashem, take great pride in our achievements as a community as we, as we grow from strength to strength, growing from into, into Shmira Samitzvahs and now into to, to the levels of learning that will bring Nachas to Rav Yitzchak Kosovsky and the founding fathers and Talmud HaChachamim of this Kehila, that we will continue to learn in Yitzchak Hashem with the, with the spirit of Dirshu, with the spirit of Havashoset Ibrahim Betzame, and in the merit of that, may Hashem bless this wonderful Kehillah because the source of all blessing is Torah. And when there's so much Torah being learned, that brings tremendous blessing to us and to all of Klal Yisrael. Our Kehillah needs blessing. Klal Yisrael needs blessing. And may we just go Mechayil El Chayil from strength to strength. God bless you and thank you. <laughs>